Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, which is Matthew 28, 20. I will never leave you nor forsake you, which is Hebrews 13, 5. His name, Emmanuel, means God with us. He is always with us. But are we with him? God is asking us if we are with him. He's been whispering it in our hearts for a long time, partly as a little nudge to figure out our priorities, and partly as an invitation to jump in with him to something new. This isn't just a small question. It's something essential to your whole life. Have you become so obligated to things around you that you hardly have time to just sit at his feet and listen? Last year, I actually broke my arm at a cycling meet. First of all, I fell in soccer, and then what happened is one week later, I was on a bike with another friend of mine. And it's a different kind of a bike. It's almost like a giant tricycle, and it's a two-seater for two people. And what happened is I wasn't even going to be racing on that bike. We were just, just doing it for fun, just to try it. As we started going around the track, we ended up going too fast. And if anybody here, I don't think anyone has, but if you have, those tricycles are really tippy. <laughs> the bike fell on me, and my friend fell on me, and I fell. And I ended up breaking my arm right there, and my left arm. The logo that I use for my ministry is my left handprint. And it's also the first painting I ever made. I was only two. <laughs> but to me, it's a symbol of my outreach, my gifting, my calling, and my destiny. Because I'm right-handed, and that's the hand I paint with, my left hand represents what I can't do by myself. It's the spiritual side that needs the Lord to breathe on what I do. Amen. Falling on it is kind of a metaphor for me on what not to do. <laughs> my actions broke a few personal thou shalt nots. <laughs> the first one is, don't partner with anyone you haven't prayed about. You don't know where they're going to lead you or what's going to happen. Two, don't run a race that isn't yours. It's kind of dangerous. And the third is pray before you act because your actions can affect your destiny. This year, I was kind of getting smart with the whole thing. <laughs> I waited to see what bike race I was assigned to before I got on a humongous tricycle. <laughs> I was actually given a tandem to ride alone, just to figure out how to do it. Those are really hard to ride, too. It felt kind of weird, though, because you're supposed to have somebody behind you, and it's just empty. It felt strange. And then, in the second event, I rode a tandem with a kid behind me that's about half the size I am. Little guy. He'd never ridden a tandem before, so he was kind of nervous about it. And those are not easy to ride at all. So I had to go slower so that he would be, you know, kind of okay with it, instead of being afraid. I didn't mind helping him along for the race, but I, that wouldn't be good in real life if you had to wait for someone like that. Do you give your strength to someone else to help them along, even though it can slow you down? Is this something that God wants you to do? If it isn't part of your assignment, don't even do it for a minute. It's not going to delay you, but it will also wear you out. 
Maybe your situation is in reverse. Maybe the person in the back seat is someone that you're helping along. Maybe the other person is someone helping you. Maybe that person is the Lord. Are you giving the Lord a back seat? Do you want his support? Especially while climbing a hill. But are you reluctant to let him steer? Or are you giving God the front seat, but you're not contributing at all? You're just, you know, kicking your feet up and you're there for the ride, you know? <laughs> Is God going to do all the work? Are you just sitting there waiting for him to take you somewhere without ever peddling yourself? You know, take me to Faith and Vision on Main Street, you know? <laughs> it's not going to work. What good is a tandem bike if you're not contributing? What good is a tandem if you're unequally yoked? Are you a good partner? Do you lean when you're supposed to or slow down when you're asked? Are you tipping over because you're not cooperating? God wants a companion, not a mooch. He wants a partner, not a boss. God's question, are you with me, is multifaceted. He's asking, do you want what I want for your life? Are you going to let me steer? Are you in sync with me? What are you willing to lay down? Where do I stand in your life? Am I your top priority? Do you love me? How much? Am I your first thought? If you're with God, you'll take the initiative to partner with Him. God wants to elevate our confidence. He wants us to know His nature and act accordingly. He wants us to know who He is so we can realize who we are. Amen. If you're with God, you will stand. He wants you to let your spirit filter out everything that is worthless to your calling. This means you're going to have to sift through your life a little. You're going to start to do, you know, cleaning your house. Do some spring cleaning, getting rid of places that tie you to where you don't belong. You're going to have to redo your schedule. You're going to have to downsize some of the people you hang around with. You know what I mean by that. You should pick your minister over your bartender. <laughs> Right now in this room, some of you are in a season of going forward, and some of you are in a season of standing. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Amen. Ephesians 6.13 this verse isn't talking about, you know, black hats and white hats, real fighting. It's talking about spiritual warfare. You can't go forward when you're in the middle of fighting off the attacks that come when you start taking initiative. The enemy doesn't bother to attack believers who aren't doing anything new. 
He likes the, just the quiet ones to just behave themselves. <laughs> it never gave him any trouble, so he just lets them go on doing it. The interesting thing is that the quiet, mm, I'm going to say Clark Kent Christians, <laughs> are the ones that need a spiritual awakening. They don't have much passion or fire in their worship and really don't lead to the deeper things of God. They just go through the motions being good, honest people. Well, that isn't bad, but you still should be doing new things. When you're moving forward and fighting with all you've got, the more likely to get where you're going. That's why standing is harder than outright fighting. Standing means enduring. It means you're probably holding your ground all by yourself. You feel tired and kind of frustrated by the lack of progress. Seems like God's quiet and he took a vacation leaving you in charge and you don't know what the heck to do. If you're with God, it means you have made a commitment to stand. If you're with God, you will awaken the dawn. What I mean by that is I don't mean waking up early. I mean you wake up the new season. The new morning that God is offering you. Psalms 108.15 says, My heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Awake, harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the people. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be all over the earth. It means you'll no longer squander what you've been given. You will not allow one more day to pass by without going after what you want. It means you'll not compromise or waste any more of yourself on anything other than what God has for you. It means you've chosen to put an end to the night. In this verse, David remembers everything that God has done for him and thanks him for his faithfulness. The way David does it is the secret. He does it by using the gift God put in him. He sings, makes music with everything. He uses his harp at the dawn. In other words, he uses it before he does anything else. It isn't the time of day that God cares about. What he cares about is being your first priority. He wants to be the very first thought. David tells the Lord that he will use his gift among the people and among the nations. He's not just going to keep it to himself, he's going to take it everywhere. It's David's promise to not waste what God has given him. It's David's invitation to let God anoint and use David's gift for his own glory. Awakening the dawn isn't about the sun coming up. It's about waking yourself up from spiritual slumber. It's about seeing what's important and making adjustments to your life. It's about getting clear about what God wants and responding to it. If you're with God, you're not going to have to ask if you are. You'll know.